Vetdern is one of Europe's largest drinking water sources. The water is clean and clear. You can even drink it straight from the lake. There are also plenty of fish, but they are unedible according to the EU. Why? Experts know that there are several reasons, including the bleaching of paper at the paper mills, pollution from mines and industry, explosions of military ammunition into the lake, sewer treatment plants. Experts aren't sure what chemicals do the most damage. However, it is likely to be the cocktail mix that is the most dangerous. Right now, 670,000 people use Vetern for their drinking water. That might be increased by 400,000 by building a 40-mile-long tunnel to Aura Bro. Eventually, that will be extended to Stockholm, where another 3 million people will be added. Why? One reason is that Stockholm's drinking water comes from Malaren, and experts worry that it will be salinated by a neighboring ocean in the near future due to climate change. If that much water is removed, will the water level sink for Vetern, like in the Colorado River or the RELC in Russia? So far, the lake is still in good shape and can be saved, but it is increasingly under attack, which could easily push it to the tipping point. The threat is called rare earth mining. The fourth largest rare earth deposit in the world was discovered just one mile from and 300 feet above the lake. It includes radioactive metals like uranium and thorium. If mined, these poisons will undoubtedly leak into the water through cracks in the ground. It is unavoidable. Why would anyone mine so close to such important drinking water? Because... Actually, the US government, the US cannot send its military to war without heavy rare earths. And at present, the only place in the world that separates heavy rare earths is China. Without rare earth metals, you cannot be the top military power. These metals are necessary to make weapons, including night vision goggles, GPS and communications equipment, batteries, and of course, precision-guided missile systems. This is why rare earth metals are essential for U.S. national defense. This creates an escalation of the trade wars. Now, the United States used to be a world leader. But 20 years ago, China figured out how important rare earths would be and boosted supply. Prices crashed. Soon, it was no longer profitable to operate mines in the United States. The last major rare earth company in North America, Molycorp, filed for bankruptcy four years ago. We now rely on China for more than 90 percent of rare earth production or processing, creating a big problem. The mining and processing of these metals in China has been a complete and utter environmental disaster, threatening the Yellow River with a half a billion people. Despite these environmental threats, Sweden is under extreme pressure from the EU to mine regardless of environmental consequences. Sweden's ability to withstand these pressures and ensure safety standards have gotten harder with law changes. For instance, Swedish mineral law has been amended from charging a 50% tax to only 0.5% tax in order to attract investors. This has brought a flood of mine prospectors, which increased the pressure considerably. Sweden has signed an energy charter treaty, which allows companies to sue the state in case a hindrance would arise after a received permit. For instance, Aura Energy sued Sweden 
for 1.7 billion US dollars to cover expected losses of profits from a uranium mine in the north of Sweden. The mine had been forbidden due to environmental concerns. CETA is another trade agreement signed by Sweden in Brussels with about the same effect. Another major problem is that companies in Sweden do their own controls. That is to say, they are in charge of their own safety tests and check for contaminants themselves. A new era has begun. Mark, it's my understanding you have one of the largest heavy rare earth deposits in the world. Mm, that's right, Tracy. You know, we're fortunate in Sweden to own our project Norisha, which is uh, 100% owned by Tasman, and uh, a fairly recent discovery, only, only discovered two years ago, but in that short amount of time it's now the fourth largest in the world for contained heavy rare earths. And, uh, and really it's one of the projects that is now understood as being one that will supply rare earths for the market for a very long time. What will happen if Tasman's plan to mine rare earth metals on Nora Shar is stopped? How much will they sue Sweden for? Is Tasman just looking for the chance to sue Sweden or perhaps to sell Nora Shar to the Chinese? The new miners are paper pushers, miners in suits. What is most important, water or military power? The magic formula for getting projects like these through is still, the solution of pollution is delusion. It isn't just Sweden that is under attack. Trump is trying to buy Greenland due to its rare earth metals. Beneath its vast ice cap, Greenland is thought to have large deposits of zinc, copper, gold and uranium. The Chinese already have a stake in a company mining the country's mineral wealth. This is an area that is opening up. Essentially, this is the frontier in terms of uh, mineral exploration and exploitation. And there is a giant tug of war going on in that frontier between China and the US. Okay. You see rare earth metals and minerals being used in everything from lasers to guided missiles to fighter jets. Just to put this in perspective, one F-35 fighter jet requires 920 pounds of rare earth materials. That's according to a 2013 congressional report. Wow. Okay. So there are very broad implications. An electromagnetic rail gun is a gun that uses just electricity, no gunpowder, and oh, by the way, can shoot a projectile like this well over 100 miles at Mach 7. Rear Admiral Matthew Plunder is the chief of naval research which developed the rail gun. That chunky object is the projectile. An electromagnetic pulse propels it down the barrel, creating a fireball of molten steel. A slug that big going Mach 7 puts a hole through six half-inch steel plates this big. Just this little slug. Went through all of these? All six of those. There's not a thing in the sky that's going to survive against that. Someone may be sending a multi-million dollar missile at us and I'm going to take it out with a $25,000 projectile round. I'll take that trade every single day. <laughs> What can we do as citizens to stop the madness? We believe it's essential to get the word out. Therefore, we urge you to share this video with as many people as you can, and please hit the subscribe button for more important videos like this. We will continue doing exposés in this fashion. So please stay tuned. Thank you.